Hello, welcome to Mortality with me. In this video, I'm going over my recent blog post with link, of course, in the video description on suicide death rate trends from 1968 to 2020. And then we have some provisional statistics through June 2021. Um, I don't have data after June 2021 because for some of these sensitive causes of death, so that's suicide, homicide, and drug overdoses very specifically, there is kind of a six-month censoring uh, for those certain causes of death. Um, the deaths themselves are in the count in the database for the provisional um, deaths, but we don't get the cause of death detail for those deaths. Um, for a while, so I only have it through June 2021. So let's get started, and I'm just going to walk through the major graphs here. So the first graph we have here um, is our overall trend, and I'm starting with crude rate. Remember, the crude rate is just the number of deaths from this particular method, so suicide. Uh, from 1968 through 2020, the number of deaths divided by the total population. And then the age-adjusted death rate is where we, you know, divide the population up or we do it by ages. And we have weights for each age. Um, and so that we will, um, and we'll do the rate for each single age. And then use this weighted average so that we have the same weights across all the years because of course the ages change over the years you know the population has been aging um so what we've been seeing we kind of see the same trajectory for both the crude rate and the age adjusted rate the actual numbers differ and we're going back to the standard quote for uh, rates, which is rates per 100,000 people per year. Um, and it's kind of in this, let's take a look, and, you know, kind of in a 10 to 14 range. Actually, it's been increasing lately, but the vertical scale here goes up to 16, starts at zero. I do prefer to, to start at zero, so I'm not exaggerating, you know, I could have started it at 10, and then it would really exaggerate that climb that we've been seeing since the year 2000, because that's really what we've been seeing is this really bad trend of increasing rate, both crude rate and age adjusted rate um, since 2000. It was this peak was in 2018. And this is something um, I'm going to be doing a series of what are these external causes of death. This is the first one I'm doing suicide. The next one I'm going to do is homicide. Uh, then I'll do drug overdoses, and then I will do um, uh, motor vehicle accidents. These are kind of major categories of external causes of death. Um, there are some other ones like falls, and that's mainly older people. And then there's some other accidental causes of death like drowning. Uh, but they're not really large numbers compared to these, and especially for like suicide, and we'll see uh, for suicide and homicide, these are significant causes for younger adults and adolescents, um, and that's why, and, and motor vehicle accidents too, which is why we're looking more closely at these because we have a lot of non-COVID excess mortality for kind of teenagers through young adults, especially younger adults and kind of the uh, millennials and People keep forgetting millennials aren't teenagers. They're adults. They're all adults. They're in their 30s, 20s and 30s. Um, so we have millennials who are like in their 30s and some of them in their early 40s. And the excess mortality has just been off the scale. And it's not COVID that's driving it. So trying to really dig into it. We're seeing all of these external causes. I've already seen some indication that drug overdoses are driving this. Let's see if suicide might be part of this. So let's dig into that. Um, so it's important to lay the groundwork. We already have a bad trend overall for the overall population. 
um, if we get into uh, the demographics and um, the first demographic graph I have, and I might try to get the graph on, on the screen here and make it a little smaller. And sorry, I'm trying to zoom in here so we get it all on the screen here. Um, so I have white and black, male and female. And the reason this grouping is this is the only grouping I have, unless you want the third group to be other. Um, this is the only grouping I have that goes all the way back to 1968. Uh, in a moment, I'll show you the groupings I have that go back to 1999. Um, but if we want to look all the way back to 1968, uh, there's definitely a sex gap when it comes to suicide death rates. And I'm using age-adjusted death rates here for all of these so that we're not distorting it based on age. Um, there's a racial gap. Um, so the black suicide rate is lower than the white suicide rate, but also a very, very large uh, sex gap. Male suicide rates are much higher than female suicide rates. Um, so even with the racial gap that we're seeing here, um, black males have a higher suicide rate than white females. Um, we could do ratios. Uh, you can download the, the spreadsheets. At the bottom of the post, there's spreadsheets and you can get uh, that data. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. These are the groupings for 1999 to 2020. And the main thing I want to point out in this one is um, Native American males. That is the worst in terms of trend and rate uh, for suicide death rates. And of course, um, Native American uh, death rates in general, whatever the cause of death in general, has been bad. Uh, there may be, and again, I can't explain this. I'm just telling you what the trends are. That is my area of expertise, is just pointing out what the trends are, coming, um, pulling out the data in a legitimate way. And that's one of the big problems that we're having with some of the mortality statistics analysis that we've been seeing is we have people who have been extracting and, and I'm going to tell you it's actually not that complicated to pull out the data and that's why I'm doing videos with working with wonder to show you how to get the data yourself and trying to sh show you how to interpret it it's actually not complicated the problem is though there are certain aspects of the data people are misinterpreting because they're not uh, catching on to certain practical, practical aspects of the data, such as in this case, um, we don't have the data for suicide statistics past June 2021, or there's a few in July at this point, but it's not many, and it has to do with standard practices. This is not new for the pandemic. This is the other thing. People are saying, oh, you know, oh, they're hiding stuff from, no, 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 no. That part of the problem is people don't understand They've always operated this way. They're not changing how they're operating. Um, and there are reasons they operate this way. Um, suicide, determining suicide as a cause of death is difficult because it's based on what the intent is. Um, and that's one of the issues with, say, drug overdoses. Obviously, one may die by suicide via drug overdose. I am not digging into method at all in this. Um, I do know for a fact, and I can demonstrate it later, most deaths by suicide are handgun. Okay? It is true, and that's definitely true for men. And that's, that's that. Um, most firearm deaths, period, are suicides in the United States not homicides, and definitely not accidental. There's actually very, very few accidental deaths due to firearms in the United States. Most are suicide. I think it's three to one. It's like suicide and then homicide and then accidents are very small. I'm not saying that any of these are great, but it's good to know what the statistics are. I know them because I look at them. Um, I am not breaking them out. It's not uh, a big contribution to the excess mortality. But it's good to know before 2020, most of these groups were showing a bad trend for suicide uh, before 2020. Okay, 
So if I just do the snapshot of 2019 versus 2020, so um, the dark blue is 2019, the light blue is 2020. So in some of these, we saw it go up. In some of these, we see the age-adjusted death rate go down. Um, it's difficult to tell if this is significant, if it's being driven by um, pandemic policies, or if it's just a continuation of a bad trend that preceded the pandemic. Uh, and that's one of the issues. If we look at the overall age-adjusted death rate, the suicide um, death rate actually went down for age-adjusted death rate for the overall population. But we're seeing, and we're going to see this with subpopulations, they're moving in different directions. Some of them go up and some of them go down. And that's the issue when you're breaking it out in different populations. They don't all have to move in the same direction. Um, and this is very significant uh, when we get into age groups. And this is where we really care. And this is one aspect that I've known for a while. And I'm not breaking it out by male versus female. Just, you know, be aware that it's much higher for men than women at all ages. Much higher, um, especially at old ages. I'm not doing those curves right now. Because the main point I want to make in these death rates for suicide, and I'm doing the 2019 versus 2020, um, I, the lowest I show here is 10 to 14. Below 10 to 14, it's not that there's no suicide deaths underneath that. It's just that you don't have, um, there's so few, I can't really calculate a rate that's statistically different from zero. Um, so I'm not going to do that. So this is low. 15 to 19 is actually still fairly low, but once you get up to 20 to 24 and you go across, yeah, there's some variation, but the really, for all of the adults, it's within a pretty narrow range of rates. It doesn't differ that much. And were you aware of that? No, probably not. <laughs> you know, this is not something, first off, most, and, and I'm not saying that you should have been. Most people don't want to think about this at all. And I'm not saying this is expected. Most people don't want to think about death rates of anything at all. But for most causes of death, when you think about it, um, most causes of death are natural causes of death. Most people are dying from heart disease and cancer. And of course, those increase with increasing age. Um, the, the death rates from cancer and heart disease. But that's not true necessarily for external causes of death, for accidents, for homicide. Homicide is going to be an interesting pattern when we get to it. And for suicide. So for suicide, it's kind of level. Now, it's, that's not necessarily true if I broke it out male versus female and yada yada. But let's just pretend for a moment. Um, so that's kind of interesting. You will note. Um, so for most of the older adults, so when we go from 35 up to age 84, um, remember 2019 is the dark blue and 2020 is light blue, the rates went down. And noticeably in 55 to 64 group, down, down, down. But for younger, and you know, for 10 to 14 and 15 to 19, this is kind of small, but like 20 to 24, you can eyeball it and see it went up. 25 to 34, it went up. And then for 85 plus, it went up. Uh, you know, I don't know how significant this is because there was some bad, again, some bad trends before 2020. It's difficult to say whether 2020 is the reason if there were already bad trends before. So, but getting back to this, you know, that there's a fairly narrow rate, but a lot of the focus, of course, is at younger ages. Now, part of it, of course, is it's more tragic to die at a younger age in general from anything. And, of course, um, you know, for suicide in particular, a lot of people feel, you know, only if we had provided more resources, etc. And, you know, I don't want to go get into that too much. That's beyond my expertise. Um, I have known people 
who have died um, via suicide and you know in in some of these cases I I don't know um, I'll just you know I'm just gonna set it to this to the side I understand um, why people focus but I'm going to also show you why I think it is actually reasonable um, I do get somewhat upset to the extent that people do give short shrift to mental health issues for older people. Um, a lot of people are lonely and do feel abandoned at older ages, and it would be nice for have them more included. That said, let's look at this graph. And this is what percentage of deaths for that age group were suicides. It's a very high percentage at lower ages. And that's hardly surprising. The older you get, the more natural things, more cancer deaths, more heart disease deaths are killing you off. Um, people aged 10 to 14, 15 to 19, you're barely dying of anything. Um, so suicide, even when your rate is lower, it really sticks out. Um, so it's understandable. It gets a lot of attention. Uh, it's reasonable. Okay. So this is one time I'm going to let you know, even though the rates are pretty level across the ages at older ages, it's not even in the top 10 causes of death past a certain age. I think past age 54, it's not even in the top 10. I forget what age it falls off the ranking list, but like it's, it's mainly natural causes of death past a certain age. Um, you might have accidents, but it's mainly falls uh, once you get old uh, for non-natural causes. Uh, when we get into, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on, on this, uh, because now that you understand, kind of, uh, we look at the death rate trends from 1968 to 2020, what you can see is there have been these bad trends of in general, increasing death rates by suicide. And this is for the under 25 year olds, and it's been going up. Um, again, don't know why, I cannot say why, but it's it's gone up. I don't know what the spike is for 15 to 19 years olds, um, something weird going on. Um, when we're looking at what I'd say the working age group, age 25 to 64, they're kind of going this, woo, you know, a roller coaster. Um, and this 55 to 64, I don't know what this huge drop off is for 55 to 64. And again, um, this drop off was occurring. The peak was like at 2018. It's dropping off in 2019 and 2020, not just... 2020. And that's something to factor in when we look at these trends, that some of these are dropping off before the pandemic, not just during 2020. Um, it's hard to tell what's going on. Some of it may be noise. You can see some of these are kind of jagged. Um, at older ages, again, we have some noise. The trend isn't as clear. Um, so I'm just putting some of these out here uh, a lot of times there's not as clear a conclusion you can do with some of these trends. Um, and, you know, that's just the way it is sometimes. And when we get into, and, I, and I, I'm going to explain the, the choice I made here. Uh, when I did quarterly number of deaths, so there were a, a variety of choices I could have made. I had to use the provisional database from CDC Wonder to pull these numbers, uh, which goes back to 2018. Now, 2018, 2019, and 2020 are actually finalized numbers from death certificates. And I could group this by week, uh, month, year. Now, if I do year, I only have half a year for 2021. Um, if I do it by week, for some of the groupings I have, there'd be too few deaths, there'd be too much noise. If I group it by month, there's enough deaths, but the months are different lengths. And again, a little bit of noise. Quarters are three months each. Um, yes, the months are still different lengths, but the quarters are closer in length to each other. 
Um, so I decided to go with quarterly deaths, but and quarters kind of match up with the seasons, you know, first quarter, you know, January, February, March, so kind of winter. Then second quarter is spring, third quarter is summer, and fourth quarter is fall, you know, broadly. And, uh, you know, I started looking at these. I am not quite sure <laughs> what's going on with some of these. It's, again, a lot of these patterns are not very clear. So with the younger group, the under age 25, and I used smaller age groups, by the way, for this than I did in the earlier one. Um, let me move to the next one. There's like this weird pattern where it seems to be spiking in the third quarter. So I'm like, why are why are these spiking? Is there like some summer suicide spike? I I'm not quite sure what's going on here, and it's even going with the tw you know I'm not sure if I'm just kind of hallucinating, and I really should push it back more years to see if there really is some kind of seasonal pattern here that I didn't realize. Um, so for the younger age people, so for like teenagers and for younger adults, um, it's not clear it might be going up in general. And, and we kind of saw that with the snapshot in 2020. It does seem like it's going up. Uh, for these groups, the older, you know, the middle-aged adults, it's definitely going down. Um, again, why is it going down? Don't know, but it's going down. Okay definitely going down here okay so we've got it going down going down and then for the older the old adults it's kind of sideways it doesn't seem to be going up or down it's just you know kind of flat even though I did say and that was for rate and and this is why it's number this is number not rate so I don't have the denominator the number of people that this is they're dying from um, so the rate could be increasing. This is just number of people dying. Um, in any case, I did look. These are the percentage increases of deaths by suicide. So 8%, 1%, 3%, 5%. And that's the increase in the rates, not the number of deaths. Um, and a 4% increase for 85 plus. Um, I'm not quite sure how substantive this is. Unfortunately, for us to see if this is noise or if this is something more sustained over the longer term is going to take more time. The Society of Actuaries just came out with their own mortality experience study, which I'll do in a separate video. And suicide was one of the causes of death they looked at. They looked at a variety of causes of death. Um, they were using different age groups, too. Uh, and... You know, again, some of these trends of increases in death rates by suicide preceded the pandemic. And that's just good to be aware. I have some older um, posts on suicide. And then here are the, um, the spreadsheets that you can download. Uh, let me open one. Let me show you the spreadsheet that has the age groups. Um, from the 1968 to 2020 um, thing. And uh, yeah, so it has the various, so you can see the various graphs. Let me just make this smaller so you can just see the graphs. Um, so we have the graphs. Uh, what you might want to do, there's some hidden sheets and you'll see, so you'll see 1968 to 1978, 1979 to 1998, and then 1999 to 2020. And that's because the uh, databases, so that's ICD-8, ICD-9, and ICD-10, uh, those are the different classifications. Um, so those are separate databases I do queries on. So let me just unhide 1968 to 1978. Uh, so you'll see the data draw from A to H. I go down to the bottom. Um, and then you'll see data set, which data set it was, compressed mortality, 68 to 78. And you see my query parameters below. Um, I use the ICD-8-69 uh, group for suicide. I'm grouping by age group and year, et cetera, et cetera. I'm doing the rates. Um, and you can see I have my age groups. I have the year, number of deaths for suicide, the total population. It gives me the crude rate. 
And then you'll see there's this extra uh, column here where I put in a key. And that's because I have a tab uh, called Graph Prep. And this is where I stitch together all of the data draws um, to put it in like this matrix where I can put it together to make the graph. So, you know, feel free to tear these apart. And, you know, if you find errors, please email me, marypat.campbell uh, at, Mary at gmail.com. Um, is my email address. Uh, you know, I always like fixing things if there's something wrong. Uh, you know, use these graphs, use the data, uh, you know, build your own stuff with the spreadsheets. Um, do what you want. That's why I put them out there so people can use them um, and give you, give you ideas of things you can do too. So, and I'll do a future video uh, working with Wonder to show you, you know, how I built the spreadsheet. Uh, you pull the data down and then stitch it together. So you can do it too. So I'll be doing more. See you all around. Enjoy.